Today's Answer Report podcast is brought to you by Audible. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash Report to get your free downloadable audiobook and free 30-day trial. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iTunes, Android, MP3 player, whatever you listen to stuff on. Welcome to the Ansem Report Podcast. This is the sixth episode of the Ansem Report Podcast. I'm here with my brother Jason. Hello. I'm Mike, the host. The Master of Masters Addison couldn't make it this week. He's got some, uh, he's, he's busy. He's very busy. He's got busy. some plans. He's, he's, he's plotting. He's plotting. He's sending his eyeball in a, in a <laughs> keyblade. He's doing all kinds of stuff. He's Something about possibly, a box. possibly putting a heart-shaped... Thing around the moon with his hands we'll get to that more later before we get started i want to mention i was on another podcast recently jason you were yeah i no was way. i was it's a podcast called suplex the sticks it's an amazing video game podcast they talk about all kinds of video games wow. but they had me on specifically holy cow i didn't know i thought i could only hear your sweet voice one time a week well, <laughs> not this week well here's the thing we also have a YouTube channel where you can always hear my. Oh speakers. my God! Really? Way to turn way to turn this plug for these guys into a thing about our YouTube <laughs> channel. Anyway, Suplex <laughs> Sticks—they're an awesome they're podcast. Awesome. Cool dudes. I was on there to talk about Kingdom Hearts spoilers. So if you didn't get enough of Kingdom Hearts spoilers from us last week, we talked for two hours about Kingdom Hearts spoilers, and we talked about all kinds of stuff with the game. We basically started from a certain point and just went and went and went and went and went. And it was awesome. I had a lot of fun. So shout out to those guys. Check that out. They also talked about who is best waifu. Unanimously no. declared Kyrie. No, we did not, <laughs> actually. They, actually, they, uh, they're they in the Kyrie's boring camp. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, never mind all that we just said. <laughs> <laughs> it's redacted. <laughs> just kidding. And but best, seriously. Best waifu is obviously Aqua. So Just kidding, uh, but seriously. Aqua's so fine in this game. She is pretty... Oh. Oh my gosh. She's bad in all the right way. Yeah. <laughs> mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> Before we start, I just want to say if you like the podcast, please go on to iTunes and give us a nice rating and review. Yes. Or just a rating is fine too. Uh share the podcast on Twitter if you'd like. Whatever you, anything to help us out would be awesome because we like talking about Kingdom Hearts and we want to Make this discussion a bigger discussion with everyone. Right, right. And speaking of that, if you want to hit us up at ansomreportpodcast at gmail.com, we would love to read your email on air and chat about anything. You can also hit us up on Twitter at Spike Getty Bros. I'm, I always try to say Super Spike Getty Bros, but that was too long of a Twitter handle. Yep. So we are that. at no, no, Spike no. Getty Bros. And hit us up with whatever uh, whatever you want to talk about, and we will chat about it. So today we got a little bit more of lighthearted affair to start the episode. Yeah, I've been um, I've been playing Kingdom Hearts. I beat I beat the game obviously, mm -hmm. and I've been kind of playing to get like uh, achievements because I'm playing on Xbox. And, you know, I want I want that thousand out of a thousand. You know, gotta That's, have it. I gotta have it. It's like chasing that platinum trophy on PS4. Yeah, yeah, the same same idea, same idea. So I've been playing. The mini games, because you have to, you know. Yeah. Uh, there were there was a there's an achievement for uh doing the dancing mini game. There's an achievement for, uh the the sledding, getting a certain score on the sledding. There's an achievement for getting a certain score in Virum Rex. And it got me thinking about all the mini games, in previous Kingdom Hearts games. Mm. And I want to know, Jason, what is your favorite Kingdom Hearts mini game in the series? <sighs> I want to say the one that I like the most, like, nostalgia-wise. It's going to be between two different ones. Okay. The first one being the poster minigame in Cage like, 2. You like the poster minigame? I like okay. the poster right. minigame. Like, I, I remember just, like, first time playing Cage 2, like, actually doing, like, a million of the jobs to get a bunch of money. Because I was like, oh, I got to get a lot of money. You know, I want to, if, if there's like a hidden, like, oh, if you get this much money, like maybe something happens right. type thing. Well, right? and you don't realize that you really need to just do each job once to a certain extent and then you're done. Or wait, you don't even I, have to do that. I think do you? you just do one of the jobs once and then be like, hey, 
I'm done. Oh, and then Hayner's like, oh, don't worry. I got the money. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Um, but uh, I remember doing that one a lot as a kid. And then the other one I remember very nostalgically is KH1 fighting everybody, dueling them on Destiny Island. Mm. Okay. Is that is that really a mini game though? I would count that as a mini game. Hmm. It's optional. Yeah, but it's it's the same mechanics of the real game. I would count it as a mini, especially when you're playing against Waka. That's a mini game. I, you're hitting I, it back at him. Whoa. Okay, all right. You know, what? I'll accept <laughs> the answer because I do like that as well. I like the poster mini game. I I think if I had a favorite mini game from those jobs, mine was the grandstanding one where you had to keep the ball in the oh, air. Oh, that's a good one. Because then when you get like super powerful with Sora, you can go back and literally keep it in the air forever. And, yeah, infinitely. And I was like, <laughs> oh, this is so cool. <laughs> uh, I, I, I got to tell you this. This is going to come. This is kind of a hot take. Hot take. This is kind of a hot take. My favorite mini game in Kingdom Hearts is the Winnie the Pooh puzzle game <laughs> from Kingdom Hearts 3. Wait, what which one? The, from the new, from Kingdom Hearts 3. The the matching game. No, but like which one? They're all the same. Kind of. No, they're literally the same. It just it changes what shapes you use. Uh they are literally the same. That's your favorite one? That's my favorite one. I love that game. You don't even have to play that game for achievements. Like, there's no high score you have to get. And I went back and set, like, really high scores in them. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm a sucker for weird little puzzle games like that. Okay, okay. Of, like, the Winnie the Pooh ones from previous games, what's your favorite? Oh, uh, what's the one where you're flying through the air and you're you're collecting all the honey? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's there's one with the balloons, and then there's one where you go like through the book on the honey pot, and then there's the one where you save Piglet, and you have to like break the things. I like the one where you're falling from the sky. You're on maybe you're on a honey pot at certain points. I don't remember it clearly. Well, there's one where you have a you have like a balloon, and you have to save Piglet, and yep, who's on your not, back? Not that one. Okay. Then there's one where you're riding on a honey pot. Yes, that one. Okay. That's the one I like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I also really enjoy um. Even though it's it's not that cool and like later, you go through the book. Right. Okay, okay. Later Kingdom Hearts games do it better. I, I really liked surfing on the trees with Tarzan. Okay. Because I yeah. thought that was cool. That was dope. That, that was, was dope. Cool, definitely. Because I I'm a big fan of the Tarzan movie. Yeah. And like if you put me in that world and tell me I can't surf on a tree, I'm gonna be pretty upset. Right. I think that's that's pretty integral to because, you know, you watch that movie and you go, oh, my God, he don't his feet hurt? He's surfing yeah. on those trees. He don't care. <laughs> right. He's a maniac. He was raised by gorillas. That, that always makes me think of the part where he's, like, hanging onto the rope and he gets the burn on his hand. Oh, yeah, dude. That, I hate that. That hurts, I hate that. That hurts uh, me. No, that no, hurts no. me physically when he's, like, <laughs> it's like, oh. Uh, do you have a least favorite mini game in Kingdom Hearts? I don't. There's not too many that are super, like, offensive or anything you know what i mean you you just like there's some that are better than others yeah i know what you're gonna say you're gonna say in 358 whenever you have to do a stealth mini game yeah i hate those mm -hmm. i hate those he he really hates those go watch our let's play for <laughs> for more uh i would rant evidence it was bad <laughs> the pete one especially was really bad yeah because he like turns around randomly so it's like you can literally only either like react very very fast and get lucky or just like trial and error right. over and over right shout out to the uh little mermaid world in cage 2 i think it was a little much to have it be a whole world but i do like the fact that there's like these little this little mini game yeah i remember like hating it when i was younger but now I'm just like, meh, that's all right. Well, Little Mermaid and, and in general. You have to do it to get Auriculum Plus. That's true. Little Mermaid in general is just such a weird uh, situation because people didn't like the controls in Kingdom Hearts 1. I didn't mind it. A lot of people do not like it. Hmm. And then the, instead of just making that better, they said, well, let's just make it a musical world where they didn't really have to even include it at all in Kingdom Hearts 2. No. If they didn't want to. So yeah, very strange. 
uh, very strange decision there. Maybe that was there was some Disney influence there that we don't know about. Yeah. Are there any like A plus tier mini games we're missing? I'm trying to think. I mean, the gummy ship in itself is a mini game. I guess yeah. There's like the Agrable one in Cage Two, where you're on the. Uh... Oh, that one's ass. Yeah, I don't like that one. Oh, that's that ass. one's really annoying to get the all the achievements in um, Cage Two. Because you have to get like a really high score. Yeah, that that mini game's ass. Never do that again, Namira. That one that <laughs> sucks. Yeah. Um. In, in one, you fly the carpet to escape the cave of wonders, but it's not really like. I guess it's a mini game, but it. You just kind of. Isn't it faster if you die though? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter so. if you die. I think so. Yeah. But it's still a mini game. Yeah. Um. The, I will say. The Winnie the Pooh minigames in two are way better than the ones in one. Yes. Yes. And to me, the ones in three are better than in all of them. Let's talk about the cooking in Kingdom Hearts 3 because it's not as cool as I thought it was going to yeah, be. It seemed like it was going to be a lot more. Like, I thought we were going to be doing, like, a couple different control, like, in a row. Yeah. But you really just do the one, and the egg cracking one is a nightmare. It's the worst. It's a nightmare. It's is a nightmare it's waffle yeah I, I i've gotten quite a few excellence on it just through sheer luck because the other ones like it's kind of like oh okay i know when to hit it's the like button. timing yeah it's like oh and th- that one it's like i i literally i told them i held the controller and didn't touch the sticks just to see what happened and eventually it was like oh too hard you crack the egg uh, so it's uh, also timed and uh, it's so that was it, it just sons of bitches. Yeah, exactly. We're on to your plans, Nomura. <laughs> um, so yeah, Kingdom Hearts mini games. I mean, Square in general is big on putting mini games into their RPGs. Yeah, I I I enjoy most of them. There, there there's only like the stealth ones in like three five eight, and I don't think there's any stealth. I like ones. the the bike mini game in Tron. Okay, yeah, the bike game's cool. Well, that's a huge part of Tron. If they didn't include that, that would have been weird. Right. I like raising the Dream Eaters and making them fight. Damn, okay. Like a little mini Pokemon (laughs) business. But then it also helps you like in the game. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. That's true. I, people don't give Dream Drop Distance enough credit. They're, they're, I get that the story, it's where the story really got convoluted. Yeah. More so than normal, but I still think it's a fun game. It was and, really confusing to follow, that's for sure. Yeah. And the uh, flow motion's broken. Yeah. Like, that's fine. And balloon. <laughs> the balloon's broken. Balloon's absolutely broken. But balloons only exist in Dream World, so it's fine. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about using balloon in real life because it's broken. Broken. Yeah, so I guess Kingdom Hearts mini games. You know, if you guys have a favorite Kingdom Hearts mini game or least favorite Kingdom Hearts mini game that we didn't discuss here, leave a leave us a leave us a note. I feel like we're missing a big we one. We are, and I can't. Mm. Mm. We also probably shouldn't have decided five minutes before the podcast that we were going to talk. Yeah, about Yeah, probably. But you know, we just decided we want to talk about something light. Is there a pirates mini game from KH two? Besides, like skateboarding. Oh, dude, skateboarding though. I th- I don't like the skateboarding. Not really a mini game. Not even in Dream Drop Distance. I can't even remember the Dream Drop Distance. In in Traverse Town, you could skateboard. I don't remember that at all. Oh, really? I don't think you ever used it because you just flow motioned your way through everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially if it was later into it. Can we talk about for a second? Change the topic, but can we talk about how in Dream Drop Distance, Traverse Town got this huge like expansion and it was like this way bigger place yeah and but they made twilight town smaller in kingdom hearts 3 that's a little weird it's very weird i feel like that's like a major gripe that i've been seeing like people are like why is twilight town so small yeah i think twilight town looks good yeah but you're telling me i can't go to the struggle lot right yeah i just want to go struggle yeah you know dude that's one of the mini games we are not talking about right I, I want that old fat guy to go, I can't wait to watch you struggle. <laughs> Worst quote of all time. Uh, yeah, dude. I, I really... And then the back alleys are there. You can't go to the, the spot. Yeah, you can't, you can't go, go to, to the, the usual spot. spot. The usual spot. So it's it's a little strange. I, I guess they had no reason to include those, so why include them? 
It's just going to make it more confusing. Oh, no. It just gives us a spot for Hainer, Pence, and Alette to hang out. Well, not just that one, but I mean in general, just the different alleys and stuff. Oh, okay. You know, like the struggle lot. If they're not going to put struggle in the game, which you would probably need Final Fantasy characters to put struggle in the game. So if you're not going to do that, then why put it in? I don't know. I could beat the hell out of Hainer, Pence, and Olette. That's true. It's just Hainer and Pence and Olette are anywhere. Like, yeah. you go into one room and they're all there. Then you go directly into the other one and they're already in there. <laughs> well, and, and, and the train station, the yes. clock tower. You yeah, they could be up either. there, too. Right. You tell me you don't want to put a hidden Mickey up there? That'd be sick. Yeah. Hidden. Or or if you could run up the, the tower and then sit up where they always eat ice cream. Oh, okay. I'm into that. That would be bad. Also, where do they buy this ice cream from? Yeah. Well, let me see the shop. I want to I wanna meet this guy that continues to sell Axel this ice cream <laughs> every day. Yeah. Even when- Well, we know, we know it's, it's, it's Uncle Scrooge who's like- In Hollow Bastion, though. In Hollow Bastion. In, in Radiant Garden. We, did, we don't know if he sells mm. it in Twilight Town because maybe he just saw it in Twilight Town. And then saw, how, saw the profits because Axel's in there buying ice cream like a <laughs> madman. And then he was like, I got to move this What to if the- Axel is the owner? And that's why he always has the ice cream because he doesn't have to pay for it. Mm. He gets high on his own supply. That's possible. I mean, he does still have to pay for it. <laughs> Do you- when you own a business, you don't just get the shit for free. Well, yeah, <laughs> but like he doesn't like. He's he, still the one. He doesn't paying pay for it. out of pocket. <laughs> yes, that's how it works. No, like out of. Okay, okay. It says company's money. Right. He's not paying you're the you're money saying, out of his you're wallet. Axel has an LLC. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Axel definitely would do that. Got it memorized. Ice cream. Axel's a weird boy. He is. He's a strange little boy because he. But he's best boy. Breaking the third. They he, they turned Axel into Deadpool. Kind of. For some reason, I don't know what happened there. Where he's just breaking the third wall constantly, and or the fourth wall. He's breaking the walls. He's breaking this is Chris Jericho. The breaking third the walls wall. Down. Anyway, I've gone off the rails Jeez. now. So we're actually gonna end this segment here. So we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about the secret movie specifically. What in the fuck is with the secret movie? Secret movie talk. So if you have not seen the secret movie, this will not make any sense to you. It will not make any sense to you. And in order to talk about the secret movie, we do have to spoil the ending to Kingdom Hearts a little bit. Yes. So if you have not beat Kingdom Hearts yet, uh, there will be a disembodied voice that's going to talk right now that may or may not be pure darkness that is going to tell you what time to skip to. <laughs> 49 minutes. Oh, my God. Thank you, disembodied voice that may or may not be pure darkness. Anyway, we'll be right back. In the end, every heart returns to the darkness whence it came. All right, guys, we got a different kind of thing for you today. We have a sponsor, and it's Audible. Audible is where you go to download your favorite books in audio form as narrated by a bunch of different people. Jason and I went on there earlier and found a bunch of different audio books, uh, Read by your favorite Kingdom Hearts voice actors, including Quentin Flynn, Richard Epcar, no Billy Zane, but I'm sure he's coming. So go to audibletrial.com slash report and download your free audiobook and you get a free 30-day trial. Go check it out. It supports the show. And uh, thank you to the folks at Audible for sponsoring us. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Answer Report podcast. We are going to talk secret movie, Jason. Oh, my God. Specifically, it's really secret real. movie, Yozora. Yo Zora. Yo Zora. So, not to be confused with Yo Zora. Yeah, not to be confused with Yo Zora. <laughs> Yo Zora. If you're Rex from Toy Story, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 he looks nothing like Yo Zora, but Rex is like, look, it's, it's, it's Yo Zora from my favorite game. And it's like, what? He, that guy looks like Riku, not. <laughs> uh, well, you know what's funny? In the, in the demo at Disney Springs, Rex says, it's Yozora and whatever the names of his two allies are, saying that Goofy and Donald are his two allies, right? Uh-huh. But they took it out, but it was in the demo. Maybe because it was too unbelievable that Rex thought they looked like those two humans. Yeah, maybe. Which is a whole other conversation about Donald's magic, because I've been thinking about this. They go into a place like uh, Tangled, right? Tangled World, Corona. Yeah. And there aren't talking animals. No. 
So no one's freaked out that Goofy and Donald walk up and they're just like, hey, so does their magic make them look like humans to everybody else but us? Oh, my God. I don't know. I, I, I can't. Im- I thought my mind was going to be blown by secret movie talk. My mind is blown <laughs> by just regular. That that sounds like a topic. For Donald's way too OP. I, I would like to actually dive in. And count the worlds where people should think it's weird that they're talking. I, I want to know what they see when Donald goes, Ingrid's yeah. <laughs> what, what type of monster is human? I don't know. Would make that noise. I don't know. Maybe he just has a normal voice. <laughs> and if that's the case, why doesn't he just make his voice normal? Okay, okay. But they would have to be like weird shaped people, though. Because Donald's like short. Right, Donald and then, would be. And then Goofy's like really skinny and tall. Donald would be like midget. Like Goofy, his, Goofy eye, would be his like eye line would be like way the fuck up here. Well, and it's what's what's weird is we get to see them as monsters in Monsters Inc. world, right? Yeah. So then they're like normal for that world. Right. But in like a human world, they don't look like humans. Yeah. So that's weird. Anyway, this is not what we're talking about right now. <laughs> Jesus. Sacred movie, Yo Zora. Yo Zora. Okay. So first we got to start with Yo Zora. With what we thought when you and I played was a throwaway in the Toy Story world. Yeah. Just to set up this cool mini game you were going to do in the mechs and why the it mechs did, were there. It did feel a little weird at first. I was like, why would they make all this just for an intro? It seems like right. a lot of work. Well, do you, I don't know if you remember. I questioned many times, and I don't know if these episodes of Let's Plays are out yet. I think they are, actually. Okay. Um, But you can, you can go back, and my reaction is, why didn't they just use Final Fantasy 15? Why isn't this, this just Noctis? Right. I was like, oh, maybe because the mechs. And then I was like, "Well, he's trying to make a uh, uh, take a shot at fifteen because he got pulled off fifteen when it was thirteen verses, right?" Right. Anyway, so we're going back to that commercial that plays, mm-hmm. and I, I'm not gonna, the movie, not the movie, not the secret movie first. Okay. And I'm, I'm gonna make some parallels between uh, Verum Rex and Final Fantasy thirteen verses, okay. which became Final Fantasy fifteen. Okay. Which actually, I should tell this story first. So, Final Fantasy XIII Versus was announced in 2006. Wow. I want to say. That's a a alongside from 2019. Yes. (laughs) Alongside Final Fantasy XIII. Okay. Uh And I believe there was a mobile Final Fantasy XIII, and they were the Final Fantasy XIII like umbrella. It was called the Novala. Crystal Project or something like that. Okay. Where the games weren't going to be tied intangibly but just by themes right okay so this game is one of those legendary development hell games okay Hmm. and it became eventually final fantasy 15 it's the game that became 15 but the trailer they showed of 13 was so badass it was so cool it it looked and everybody knew that tetsuya nomura was working on it and he was the director of kingdom hearts Mm -hmm. okay so it looked like a more mature look at Final Fantasy. Like Noctis would stab his sword through somebody and they'd come out the other side and there'd be blood. Yeah. And, you know, just all kinds of cool stuff. Um, it was pretty edgy. Yeah. You know, but it looked amazing. Like the graphical right. fidelity of it looked amazing. And it um, looked like Kingdom Hearts gameplay in a Final Fantasy game. Mm-hmm. Right? So... I was excited as shit. I was like a I just graduated high school, I think, wouldn't that? Damn. Yeah, I know. That's how old it but is. But yeah, that that would match up. Yeah. I, I, I was oh six. Yeah, I graduated in 05. So I yeah. just graduated high school when I was like we were just off of Kingdom Hearts two. And we were like, Oh and versus thirteen is one of the main reasons Kingdom Hearts took so long Kingdom Hearts three took so long to happen. Right. Because Tetsuya Nomura was the director. I believe around two thousand fourteen. They took him off the project. So from 2006 to 2014, he was working on it. Yes. So eight years. Wow. Maybe seven. Maybe it was 13. 2013. (laughs) And at that point... You just said seven and 13 (laughs) way too quickly. People are going to... There's a code. If you analyze my speech patterns, there's a code. (laughs) Uh, So at that point, they said, hey, guess what? This game... And they hadn't shown it in a while. Like They showed a bunch of it to start, and then they hadn't shown it in a while. And they're like, guess what? This game's Final Fantasy 15 now. Yeah, like it showed the thirteen, and then it gets yeah. slashed. So and it's then like it's the 15. same characters ask, but it's a much different game because Tabata took it over. Mm-hmm. I don't remember Tabata's first name, which is pretty disrespectful, but <laughs> he he became the director, and they pulled 
The, 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 no one knows the real story, right? Yeah. The, the the consensus is that Nomura was pulled off it to work on Kingdom Hearts 3 because the game he was trying to make was taking too long. Mm. Okay? And so they took what they had and made it into what Final Fantasy XV became when it released a couple years ago. Right. Okay? Uh, Nomura has, you know, voiced... Not really voiced um, displeasure with what 15 became, but he just, you could tell he's not a fan. It's not his baby. It's not his baby. But Noctis is one of his babies. And there was an interview I read where he talked about that. People asked, Who are your favorite characters you ever designed? Because he's designed so many characters for right. Square. And he said, Sora, because Sora's been with me for almost 10 years now. It's the longest I've ever worked on a single character. Yeah. And uh, Disney's adopted him too. So he's kind of, I think he said he's, he's, he's a good boy. I think yeah. the, the translation said he's a good boy. <laughs> And then Noctis is kind of my new good boy. Mm. Um, and Noctis Calum means night sky, and Sora means sky. So you can see he's the dark side of Sora. Or, you know, that's what yeah, said, yeah, right? yeah. So then that was before they took the game away from him. Mm. Then Dissidia NT had a live stream where Nomura was on it, and he said he drew Noctis for the first time in a long time for Dissidia NT, and he cried while he was drawing Noctis. So to me, that says... Hey, this guy's not happy with what happened to Noctis. Right. Right? So, flash forward to Kingdom Hearts 3 Verum Rex. Okay? Uh, also, it's it's important to point out that what the trailers we were shown in Versus 13, while the characters are the same and the setting is somewhat similar, it's a completely different game than what he was going for. Yeah. It really is. It, it's just not at all the same. So, Verum Rex. Okay? Which Verum Rex is Latin for True King. Okay. They show this Noctis like character. He also kind of looks like Riku. Uh, he has skull and crossbone imagery all over him. Mm -hmm. Like in like little beads and like like uh the shininess, and that's a huge thing that Noctis had. Okay. okay. He has two different color eyes, one red, one blue, which not something Noctis had, but Noctis's eyes did change color to from blue to red when he would summon his royal arms. Oh, I didn't him. notice that. Yep, yep. His eyes turn red when he does that. Uh, and that was in the early trailers. Not It ended up being in the game, too, but in the early trailers. There's also a big sword guy uh, who has similar clothes to... Um, Gladio? I wanted to call him Bravio. Bravio. <laughs> no, Ravio, like uh, Ravioli. Gladio. Ravio. Gladio. And he has a giant sword and, and, and similar clothes. But then when you look at him in the face, he looks a lot like Ignis. Like he has like thin rim glasses and mm -hmm. like the hair. So they kind of push mush those characters together. Luna Freya is the love interest in 15, but before she was Luna Freya, she was called Stella. Okay. And she had darker hair. And the character in Verum Rex looks just like Stella <laughs> and does similar things to Stella. Uh, her name means like star, I think, and she has a star pendant on. You know, there's all these. Right. There's a scene where uh, Yozora is reaching for whoever this character's name is, mm -hmm. and they get blown away. And that's literally a scene in one of the 13 versus trailers. Uh, Yozora at one point pulls an enemy into a red, like, warp portal. Yeah. And then s slashes it. It's a warp, a warp slash. Okay, <laughs> it's like a metaphor for warp, warp yeah. slashing. Um, so there's a lot of things where, uh, and even the end screen where it says "Bye, Viram Rex," he's sitting there like all leaning back on the stairs, just like just how like the first 13. thirteen versus trailer ended, like with him just sitting on his throne, right after he murdered like a million right, robots. Right. And so, the more I thought about it after we played the Let's Play, the more I was like, that was like him like blowing off steam. For not being able to finish his game the way he wanted, right? Yeah, maybe. He said, oh, I just threw that in. But the more I thought about it, too, and, and you're, you said this earlier, the more it was like, that was a lot of work just to do something like that, right? Yeah. So then the secret movie. And I remember you and I were sitting there, and we had just unlocked the secret movie, and it said, Yozora unlocked. And I went, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> like are you serious right yeah. now yo zora and i was like well maybe it's like a joke secret movie that's what i thought like at the end of marvel where like 
at the end of Thor, well, I don't know why I'm picking Thor 2 as the example, but the end of Thor 2, one of the beasts that got released, he's just chasing birds and it's funny, you know? <laughs> Something like that. But no, 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 no. So to describe the secret movie to you guys if you haven't seen it, and they will be playing on the YouTube version of this, uh, we see a couple puddles on the ground, one glowing kind of blue, one gro- growing kind of glowing kind of red. A drop of water hits the water. You know, Ripples. Ripples. And from first person view, we are watching Sora wake up and he looks at his left hand. Uh, he then it pans out and it shows Sora and he's looking around this hyper realistic world and he's very concerned. You, the the eye animation is very good. Yeah. Like he kind of his eyes kind of dart around it and like you, just from that, his eyes like squinting just a little bit. You can see that he's like, what, what the hell's going on? There? Yeah. Then it shows Riku as well waking up in a similar world um, and he kind of does the same thing. And it, it's playing, um, it's playing the music, I believe, from Deep Dive. It's okay. like a remixed version of Deep Dive's music, or maybe it's another side of the story. I don't remember. It's one of the Kingdom Hearts One Secret movies, right? Uh, and so they, it starts flashing around the city that they're in, and then Sora shows up in Shibuya, which, um, you know, it's Shibuya because they have what is the. Um, the 109 department store in the back of Shibuya, which is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. But they change it to 104 because copyright reasons. Right. Uh, And we'll talk about that more in a minute and how people think that relates to The World Ends With You. Uh, And then they show Riku in Shujinku, which is a couple miles from Shibuya. These are all in Tokyo. Right. And uh, he's by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building, which is actually... Um, a very large building with two two towers, two so to distinct speak. two distinct towers spires. So then the camera that shows Sora. They both look up in the night sky, and Sora's kind of pans out to show the rest of Shibuya, kind of thing. Yeah, and then it fades, and then when it comes back in, it plays a song that it's not Somnus from Final Fantasy fifteen, but it's damn near close, and it's. It's trying to evoke that in you when you hear it. Mm. Like, it's close enough to go, this is Somnus, right? But it's yeah. not the exact same chords. Mm. I don't know if it's in a different key or what it is. And they pan up, and there's Josora sitting on sitting on top of the Tokyo uh, Metropolitan Government Building. Which looks also like the building from 13, right? I was going to connect that in a minute. Okay. Uh, and then it shows a character in a, in a hood looking at the moon, and he kind of does the picture thing first, and then he does the heart over the moon to make it look like Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Hearts. And then it says, reconnect! Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> okay. So that's a secret movie. I'm going to tell you how this all connects to different things. Okay? Uh, first of all, a lot of people think this has to do with The World Ends With You. Okay? Because in The world, the world Ends With You characters were in Dream Drop Distance. Uh-huh. And Sora tells Neku he will visit them. And Neku says, see you in Shibuya, right? Yeah. Um, and a lot of people think, if you don't know The World Ends With You, which I haven't played it myself, so full disclosure, I might not be the best expert to talk about that part of it. But basically, Neku is dead, and right. he has to play what's called the Reaper's Game, and he has to, if he completes certain objectives in a certain amount of time, he can be alive again. Mm. Okay? Uh, that's, the, that's the short version of it. Um, we're actually probably going to play the real, the world ends with you after we're done with Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah, just because uh, I'm interested in that whole scenario, and it just got re released for Switch last year. So, um, but I don't necessarily. Agree. People are saying because in the world ends with you, they changed the 109 building to the 104 building, so that means it has to be Shibuya, and it's like there has to be the world ends with you. But they could just be doing that for copyright reasons or as an homage to The World Ends With You. It doesn't mean it's The World Ends With You. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying, because Sora doesn't look at his right hand, I don't know if you remember from Dream Drop Distance, but they have those timers on their right hand. Oh, yeah. If he would have looked at his right hand, you'd show you a timer, and that would spoil it. And it's like, well, no, not necessarily. So I'm in the not The World Ends With You camp, mm. personally. But it could, it could happen. Yeah, I'm not sure. I could see it either way. Right. So, back to Yozora here sitting on top of the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. That building is what they based the castle in Insomnia on. 
Okay, in Final Fantasy 15 and 13. They may uh in Final Fantasy 13 there's a lot more you spend a lot more time in Insomnia. Mhm. Like from what the trailers would say, that yeah. 15 15 you leave Insomnia right away and you don't come back till the end of the game yeah. and it's like possessed by monsters. Um the Insomnia that Nomura was designing was based off Shujinku, which is where that building is. Yeah. So it makes sense to me that this is him getting another shot at doing 13 verses without it being a new game. I I don't know. You'll notice too, Yozora is designed very differently. Like it's like, oh, he looks just like Riku. But if you look at his facial features, he's designed to look more realistic than Riku or Sora are. Like he, he has normal sized eyeballs. Yeah, his eyes aren't insanely large. He has normal sized eyeballs and his like his his face is just designed to look more like a Final Fantasy character as opposed to a Kingdom Hearts character. Yeah. Which Kingdom Hearts has that Disney aspect, so they are a little and it's more anime too. Yeah. Um so the most wacky part of this to me, and we talked about it in the last podcast briefly, because you said I just read this. Mm-hmm. I went and did the research myself. I went on Google Maps. Yeah. I typed in the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building, and I typed in the Square Enix headquarters. They're only a few miles from each other. They can be seen from each other. The building that the hooded figure is standing on is without a doubt 100% Square Enix headquarters. The Square Enix headquarters. And the reason I say this, if you you go look this up yourself, and I'll probably have, I'm probably going to do a capture of it showing you guys for, for the YouTube version of this. But the way the Square Enix building is shaped and angled, okay, mm-hmm. the one corner of it almost points directly at the Tokyo Metropolitan Government building. Right. And he's standing directly at that corner, putting his heart in the moon. And then there's one building that's just... On the other side of the street. On, on the other side of the street that's way taller than the Square Enix building. Mm-hmm. And there's not really a whole lot of tall buildings for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's tall buildings, but you can still see the Tokyo... Metropolitan Government Building because it's one of the tallest buildings in Tokyo. Mm. And you can see it. And it's there. And it's like, what did Nomura mean by putting this character on top yeah. of the Square Enix building? One thing I would be curious to know is if, like, realistically where they put the moon, if that's, like, where it should be. Because if it's not, so, if that's where it, it shouldn't be, maybe that means something. I want to say yes. Mm. Because one of the ads from Final Fantasy Thirteen was a shot of insomnia yeah with the moon right above it mm. so in my head nomura sits in the square enix building designing stuff and he's inspired by the world around him right and so he's seen that mm. in my head he has gone by that building and seen the moon right above it and gone cool you know yeah i think that's why he was so interested in using that as a like you know copy of what the castle would look like in the in those games, right? Yeah, yeah. So I I I think that's where the moon ends up. Mm. I'd be interested to see if you're right though, because if it's not, then, then that means like... there's some Kingdom Hearts stuff happening. Right. right. <laughs> uh, I just think all this is very wild, and I think he kind of knew what he was doing, you know? Yeah. No, definitely. Um, with all this and just the. I'm very interested to see if we get that final mix kind of DLC and get an extended version of this trailer because I don't know what it's going to be then. Uh, my case against The World Ends With You is because it's a very realistic-looking Shibuya. Yeah. And they're not realistic-looking characters. They're more akin to, like, Sora and Riku, Yeah, and which is why they fit so well in Traverse Town and Dream Drop Distance. Mm-hmm. The only thing that it has going for it is that when I was on Suplex of Sticks, they mentioned this. When Neku wakes up at the beginning of the game, he wakes up exactly how Sora does, I guess. Mm. I don't know if that means we see it first person. I doubt it because it's a very sprite, detailed game. Yeah. But he like wakes up in a puddle of water and looks at his hand, maybe. I don't know. Mm. Secondly, if you remember in Dream Drop Distance, that Traverse Town was split into two, right? Yeah. One side had certain uh, World of Duty characters, and then Riku's side had other ones, right? Yeah. In... The world ends with you. I was doing a little research on this. Um, they have what's the real world and mm-hmm. the, the I don't remember. They have a term for it. I don't remember what it is. But where you are as a character. Okay. And so you can't affect those people, but you can hear their thoughts hmm. kind of thing. And so it would make sense to me 
if Riku was in the real world as alive and Sora, based on how Kingdom Hearts 3 ended, was in the dead world. Okay. And people think he's playing that Reapers game trying to get his life back. People are saying, well, maybe he had to give his life for Kyrie, and this is the punishment he received, and now he has to try to win his life back or whatever. That still doesn't make sense as to why Riku's there to me. Yeah. I guess Riku went to look for him. I don't know. Right. Uh, what do you? Uh, I think we need to know some more about what's going right. on. I think a lot of because people... there's going to be more overarching story. I don't think that the whole world ends with you thing is going to be a major plot point. Because you know what I mean. Like in a, uh, the Kingdom Hearts games, the different worlds don't necessarily like have huge plot points. Right. right. You know, like right. it just wouldn't make sense. And with 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 Varum Rex being or the Yozora being there and the whole I I don't know. I just I don't understand why Yozora would be in the world ends with you, you know? Well, the idea is he's not. Like a lot of people a lot of people think that those are two different worlds. But for them to just take two different parts of Japan that both look realistic and go, These are two different worlds, to me that seems weird. No, I don't know yeah. why they would do that. No, that was makes sense. Literally districts of Japan or Tokyo that are like miles apart. Right. Barely. You know? Yeah. Uh, do you think the character standing on the Square Enix building means anything? Like, do I think that it matters that he's standing on the Square Enix building as opposed to any other building? What I what I think is that he he's standing on the Square Enix building to signify that this is going to these are the Square Enix characters. Like this, the, you're you're gonna go to some Square Enix worlds. You're going to go to the Nier Automata world. Mm. You're going to go to the Final Fantasy whatever world. Yeah. You're going to go to the World Ends With You world. Mm. You're still going to go to Disney worlds because they're not going to get rid of Disney, and they can't. Sora, yeah. Sora's owned by Disney. Right. I don't know if Riku is. I, I don't know how that works. That it's all seems weird to me. Yeah. But uh, I, I think that's what it's meant to signify, is that the master of masters, Tetsuya Nomura, <laughs> not Addison, is standing on that Square Enix building going, you know, this world's a great place, but it'd be a lot better with some Kingdom Hearts in it. Mm. Right? I see that. That's what I think, and mm. that's exciting to me. So you think it's Master Masters, not Luzhu? I don't think it's Luzhu. No? I think whatever happens with Luzhu, I hate to say this, Hmm. That's that's gonna be the next game, but it's gonna be a spinoff. You think so? Yeah. Mm. Or it's DLC or something. I I I don't think that's. The, I think the box is a red herring, man. You think so? I don't think the box matters. It only matters as much as to it how it matters to the master of masters. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I I don't. What about the theory that the master of masters body is in the box? It's possible. So I've, then I've he read could that. Tra- so then he could Travel. transport yeah. time at any any point. Yep. I think it's gonna do some Cohen Cambria bullshit, <laughs> where Tatsuya, no- Tatsuya Nomura is writing the story in the real world, and Sora and Riku have to go stop him. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like, stop! We just want to die. He's the master of masters. No, and he's he's writing all this shitty things that happened to Sora and Riku. And he inserted himself. Oh my god, I like this theory actually. He inserted himself into un- the Union Cross, the land of fairy tales, to like change the story because he didn't like how it went. Hmm. Mm. 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 This is getting interesting. This is getting very. I'm writing notes right now. <laughs> uh, does this? I mean, does this excite you? Does this? Does this make you? I'm very, very intrigued. Yes, my intrigue is peaked. Now, I do want to say this. If we would have been doing this podcast when Kingdom Hearts came out, first of all, everybody would be saying, what the fuck's a podcast? Second of all, <laughs> we would say, okay, so that blonde boy, he's a new Keyblade man, and that's Riku, and they're fighting in New York City. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Like We would have all these theories that would end up being completely wrong because Kingdom Hearts hadn't fallen off the rails yet with all this nonsense, right? right. If you would have told me, well, that's Sora. That's his nobody. When Sora released his heart, 
uh, made a whole nother made being, a whole nother being named Roxas, who, st- <laughs> who can wield two keyblades. I would have been like, that's nonsense. Yeah. Or the second the second movie. Okay, so that's Terra Aqua and Ven, and they are from the past. The past. They're early, and then that's Master. And Xehanort. Ven's from the very far past. Yeah, and that's Master Xehanort and Venetus, and Venetus is darkness, and Ventus is light. And uh, Master Xehanort is actually, he's um, he's the other Xehanort from the game. He possessed <laughs> Terra to be the other Xehanort. Right. And then Terra, un- when he was Xehanort, unlocked his heart to create Ansem and Zenmus. And you know what I mean? Definitely. Like, my eyes would glaze over two seconds, but you're completely wrong. So I don't think anybody's right about this. Probably not. I, I don't think any of us are right. O- only only Nomura knows what's going on here. Uh, speaking, you just reminded me of something I wanted to talk about. So we're changing the subjects real quick here, folks. Ventus. Yeah. You and I had a conversation about Ventus where I said, what if Ventus is the one who killed Starletzia? And you said, Ventus wouldn't do that. You know, Ventus is a nice boy. Da, da, da. Yeah. But Ventus still had Venetus inside him during the events of Union Cross. He still had darkness. Yeah. What if Ventus is the one who killed Starletzia because of the darkness in him, Venetus? Hmm. It's like, oh, the darkness in him was also really powerful? Well, that's the idea, right? I mean, look at how powerful Venetus became. Right. He's a special boy. It would make sense. Yeah. Like, imagine if in Kingdom Hearts 1 they took the darkness out of Riku. Pretty powerful, right? Maybe, yeah. Just a thought I had. Right, it is a good point. I, I actually do think it, it's... um. Uh, uh, L, 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 Eleanor? <laughs> What's Lark scenes? Elrena. Elrena. I think it was her, because I think she's jealous because she wants Lorium. Even though that's like his sister? Type yeah, thing. but he spends too much time with sister. It's weird. Mm. You got to offer, you know. She had to offer him. Yeah, she, she, or offer. She had to offer. You spend too much time with him. Okay. Maybe, maybe he's a sister fucker. <laughs> Shut the hell. Up. Maybe. Maybe. Oh god. Maybe they're on. You know, they're they're on that kind of shit, and she saw it, and she was like, "Well, I I had to have him for myself, so I got to kill a sister." Hmm. Maybe it's not like really a sister. Maybe it's just like, oh, that's like my sister. Oh yeah, okay. Like a like a reverse Luke Skywalker Princess Leia situation. Y- yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Where they're like, but they know they're not brother and sister. Oh. But they just say they are. Oh, I think Luke and Leia knew. <laughs> I think they were just feeling strange. That's, a, that's, that's where it different. I feel like they were just feeling strange, that's and they had to go with story. it. Anyway, uh, if you want, if you think we missed something on this, or if you have a point you want to make, either go down, and leave us a comment on YouTube, or hit us up at answerreportgmailpodcast.com. The answer, answerreportpodcast at gmail.com. I messed up the order. Yeah, of that. yeah. Or hit us up on Twitter at Spaghetti Bros. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the music in Kingdom Hearts Three. It's Stay tuned. Be great. Stay tuned. I bet I'll say something about um, face my fears. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know. I'm. It's like I can. It's like I sent my eyeball just the farther Holy in the podcast. Cow. I know. You've completed your mission. I completed my mission. Now I can. I had a role to play. You know. Mm. Every light must fade. Every heart return to darkness. Welcome back to the Ansem Report podcast. We now, back. We, we just got done talking about secret movie insaneness, so if you skipped that part, welcome back. Uh, thank you for listening to the disembodied voice that may or may not be darkness. We're going to talk about music. Music. Specifically, Kingdom Hearts 3 music, Jason. Okay, okay. The music in Kingdom Hearts 3, believe it or not, is amazing. Wow. It's amazing. I didn't believe it. Now, I know you didn't believe it, but now, now you bought it and you can't give it back. <laughs> the, but it's a good, it's a in a it, good way. In a good way. I'm a little disappointed they haven't released an official soundtrack yet. Yeah, I looked it, it up and was like, wait, because I I would buy that on vinyl. 
Yeah. I'd buy it on CD. I'd buy it on cassette. I'd buy it on 8-track. Yeah. I'd buy it. Uh, music for it and not know how to play it and I would stare pay at it. A, a live orchestra to follow me around and play it mm. but they don't know how to play it because there's no official soundtrack interesting, interesting. <laughs> um, to just follow me stupid. around that's stupid you wouldn't really do <laughs> that that's you know, stupid this guy this I guy. would I would no you would I really would so the music <laughs> I've noticed there's a lot of because of all these characters coming together there's a lot of different character themes. I'm, not, I'm sorry. I just was thinking I have the orchestra following me around, right? Uh-huh. And I, <laughs> I'm telling them what songs to play. I'm just like, play Roxas's theme again. And they're like, oh, not again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of different mashups because the characters are all here. Right. And they got to make room for them. Yeah. So, for example, spoiler. Shoot, there's going to be spoilers in this, too. How can we avoid spoilers in this? Mm. Okay, it's not really a spoiler to say you're going to fight characters, right? I don't think so. Like, at this point, it's like, if I tell you you're going to fight Zenmus, like, that's, a, that's a given, right? <laughs> I, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, so you fight Zenmus and two other characters. I'm not going to spoil which ones, but I'm sure you can guess if you're not an idiot. <laughs> oh <my> and <laughs> they mix all three of their battle themes up from their different games where you fought them. And it's amazing. It's yeah. an awesome track. I love it. Uh, and the version we listen to on YouTube is like 16 minutes long. Yeah. Uh, I think they loop it a couple yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> There's a version of Roxas's theme. That's like battle music, mm-hmm. and it has a bit of Vector to the Heavens in it. Yeah, and it's so good. That's probably my favorite Ooh. track in the game because it it's also part of my favorite scene of the game, or just after my favorite scene of the game. It's called the other side, right? It's called the other promise. The other promise. The yeah. other promise. The other side game. is like an organization. Yes, theme. that's an organization. Theme. Do you have a favorite song from Kingdom Hearts 3? Mm. Honestly, it's, it's probably the Xemnas and two other people <laughs> mashup. The the Ansem and two other people mashup. <laughs> the young Xehanort and two other people <laughs> mashup. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Sorry. Spoiler. Um, yeah, dude. That, that song is so legit. Yeah. Like, it's just ugh, it's so good. I love the... Uh, I like the new organization theme, too. Yes, the new organization theme Cause slaps. Because I've, I've always been a sucker for the like uh, original Organization 13 What's funny theme. about that theme is when I hear that, mm-hmm. I think of, like, another side, another story, which is the second secret movie, the final mix secret movie. Oh, yeah. Because it plays in it. But I also just think of Zigbar. I don't know why I associate that theme with him, huh. but that's just what I what I when I hear that theme, I'm like that's Zigbar because I think I think part of me just knew that Zigbar was gonna be a big deal. <laughs> you know? So did I. <laughs> we just knew. We just knew. Uh, and if you don't know what that we means, knew that's Daddy okay. Zigbar. Daddy Zigbar. What's your favorite? I mean, this is cheating, I guess this category. But your favorite Disney World music. Hmm. Disney world like, music. I, I got to say the night theme that plays during Big Hero 6. I don't know what it's called, mm. but it's like this dope, like techno-y. Like, okay. I really like that. I also really like the Toy Story battle music. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That just... I don't like the Toy Story regular music as much, though. You don't like the... You got a friend in me. I like it, but I feel like it leans too heavily on that song specifically. Yeah. It just be- and it's kind of like a loop of it. I, yeah, well, and when Addison and I went to see the orchestra last summer, that's the Kingdom Hearts 3 song they played. Mm-hmm. They're like, "We're going to play the Toy Story music from Kingdom Hearts 3." And I was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And I just was like, eh, "This is okay." Mm. You know, maybe cuz it's not it's not I really like the Frozen just regular music. Yes. Non-battle music. 
yes, it's very it's very wintry. And yeah, I, like I don't it. know. Is that based off a song from Frozen, or is I it don't just know. Yoko just did her thing? And I don't know, because it's very good. Right, and it, it, it captures like I feel like are there sleigh bells in it? Because I feel like they should be if they're not. <laughs> you know, it, it definitely invokes the like like holiday spirit. Yes, definitely, definitely. Honestly, all the Disney music is really good. I'm disappointed with the Pirates music. You wanted he's a pirate, huh? Kind of, but like not even just that. Like if if they just took like, cause like, I really like the soundtracks for the movies too. Like we own the soundtracks, mm-hmm. and I like grew up hearing them, and so I really like the soundtracks. And it, they kind of did their own thing with it, yeah. but I don't like the like shouting. I guess like the yeah the uh who <gasps> yeah duh. Thing. It's like yeah. it's like it's like a Skyrim Fushra song. Da. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't know. I do, I liked it at first, but like it got really old t- to me really fast. I like the music that plays when you're not fighting, though. When you're like exploring the islands, I can't think of how that one goes. It's just, it's very bright and happy and mm. tropical, and I, I I really do like that. Mm. My other favorite track, though. I don't, God, this this whole spoiler thing. If you if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't beat Kingdom Hearts three yet, then you can the final world. Is so good. Mm-hmm. I kind of hated collecting the Soras just because I was like I, it kind of was a little tedious. Well, it wasn't. It's not even tedious. It's just that like something big happened and it's the lull. Yeah. So like I hated the idea of it, but the more I did it and was listening to that music that plays, mm. the more I was like, all right, you know, I was I'm just cool chilling. I'm cool. With I was it. just chilling. I was just like, yeah, I'm into this music. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh it's so good. I remember. Oh, it, go it was in one of the trailers. The the new Vanitas theme. Oh, dude. Anything Vanita slaps. So good. Well, okay, and I was actually going to talk about this. Yoko does a really good job here. Uh, she's composed all the Kingdom Hearts music. Mm-hmm. I think. Did she do Birth by Sleep in? I don't know. I, I need to look at this before I before I talk out of my ass. Hold on, guys. Sorry. <laughs> so she did. She's done every Kingdom Hearts game. Good for her. She yes. also did Super Mario RPG. Do you know that? I'm not surprised. <laughs> yep. So what I was going to say is... I remember when we were playing Birth by Sleep, I was there's obviously songs I like, but I was like, I don't know if I like the direction this music takes. It's really like beat heavy, drum machine heavy. Yeah. Like there's a lot of songs like that. Uh it, like a good example of it is the song that uh plays when you fight Lingering Will. Okay. That's a very birth by sleepy song. You mm. know? It, it's just like the drum beats so fast and and I like that song, so it's not a good example, but it's just an example of what I'm talking about. What, like, like the type of theme. Type of, like, battle music we were getting. And I was like, I don't know if I like the direction this music's going. And then Dream Drop Distance kind of came back. Yeah. And then 3 is amazing. The work she did on 3 is just fantastic. Uh, just, And some of it is still some of that drummy stuff, but it works better, I feel like. Yeah. And it's almost like that's the identity she gave Birth by Sleep. Because the songs that are like that are have to do with the birth by sleep characters usually. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get. I, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like it's never like, oh, this is uh, Axel's new theme, and it's like this like drum <laughs> like kind of yeah. thing. Uh, and it's not like she never had tracks like that in the in the Kingdom Hearts games. It's just birth by sleep in general. I feel like had a lot of tracks like that. I can see that. Barring the Vanitas song which is literally <laughs> the best song of all time uh <laughs> i really like aqua's theme too yeah like, i do like aqua. i i want to say like i like the, the character themes i guess i'm just I, I guess i'm mostly just talking about battle music and birth by sleep yeah no i, I definitely see that it's, it's definitely more fast pace drum heavy and not at, not like it's not even like techno i i'm having no. trouble describing it it's just a, they're like really high bpm songs yeah and the drum noises in it are very like artificial mm-hmm um, but not like electronic. No, no, and it's like, uh, it's like no real drummer could play it. 
you know, yeah, like yeah, it, it yeah. just like and, and it always like sounded like that with the battle music for for uh, BBS. But I'm glad that there's a good mix of this stuff in three. Mm-hmm. The Keyblade Graveyard music, which is a version of one of my favorite Kingdom Hearts songs of all time. Which is the second? Which is the secret movie song? The first Kingdom Hearts two. I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> I think it's called Sunset Horizon. Sunset okay, yeah, Horizon. Yeah, yeah. But I think that in this game they call it Graveyard Horizon or something like that. Like mm-hmm. they, she calls it Keyblade Graveyard Horizon or something like that. But it's so good. Mm. And that song used to like haunt my nightmares. I remember we we, we would play it and we would get to that point and you'd be like, Jason, no, I don't want to go to this world. Yeah. yeah. Because when you when you play through BBS, you obviously go there three times, and the first time, just like, oh my god, this is creepy. Yeah, and then just being haunted for three <laughs> three more playthroughs or right. two more playthroughs. Right. Ugh. Each time being like, oh my god, well, what? I literally I remember that song, and I know we're not even talking about Kingdom Hearts three music right now. Really, that song like really made me. Um, appreciate that secret movie and i almost like that secret movie before the extended one more where they show xehanor and yeah is popping off and all that and they show tara's eye turning yellow and all that mm-hmm. i like the original one better because it was so it's it's a lot like yozora is which, it's so alien right it's so different but still there's something about it that's kingdom hearts and you have no idea what's happening. And I remember everybody was like theorizing, like it's ultra real. Oh, they they killed something right before it, and what was it they killed? Was it a behemoth? Was it you know? Yeah. And then who's that guy? What that guy walking forward? He's he's a uh, uh, he's Riku's brother, Riku's dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like people are just like throwing stuff together, it's like they like they are right now with Yozora. Yeah. Uh, and. But what always struck me was the song that played, and the fact that they've continued to use that song and remix it, and just makes me so happy because that's it. a great piece of work. Kingdom Hearts would not have the effect on us that it does without the music. Without it good just, music, it, it just, just wouldn't. wouldn't. Yeah. there's no way. Uh, music's a really big deal to me. I know it's a really big deal to you. Yes. And you know the there's scenes where without Roxas's theme or without Sunset Horizon or without whatever it might be. I wouldn't have it wouldn't have the effect on me that it definitely does. not. Like uh, I have I have like the the two soundtracks for the two mainline games one and two, and then the piano versions where it's like like a very classical just like piano cover of the songs. Mm-hmm. And I still I just I love listening to it. You know it's so good. I can't wait for Cage Three to drop their soundtrack. Right. Yeah. I, I need to pick that up because I want to. I want to have it. I want to have it, please. I want to have it, please. 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 So moving on in music, I got I got another question for you. Hit me with it. Does Face My Fears hold up to Sanctuary and Simple and Clean as an opening movie song? Not yet to me. Mm. Okay. I think in time it might. Okay. But right now... When you walk away, like <laughs> that, that's just like iconic as like people use that. Well, in, what about sanctuary? In memes, though? that too. Like I'm just saying, like you can literally say like when you walk away in off Kingdom Hearts meme, and people will automatically hear well, right. like that that intro. You know what I mean? And so I, I think that'll happen. May maybe happen eventually. I don't know yet. I I agree that it's nowhere near close to Simple and Clean or Hikari, which is the Japanese version of Simple and Clean. Right. However, I do think it's pretty close to Sanctuary. And mm. I think Sanctuary, I, while I love Sanctuary, I do think that they're similar in tone. And in a few years, we'll watch the opening movies next to each other and we'll mm. go, these are pretty similar. Mm. I like the breakdown more, of Sanctuary better. I, I, I just, that's what popped in my head. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> Like, but you can compare them. And I think actually the opening movie, two, three, with Face My Fears, is a better package than two's opening movie. I mean, I can't really. And that might be a hot take. I think it's because, like, 
in three, there's like a very obvious like, okay, we're setting up all these things have been building up to this point. And so they're able to kind of like use that and use the, the the whole chessboard thing that they have going on. Whereas like with KH2, it was like, okay, well, this is what we do with KH1. And we want to like stick to our roots. And so then keeping chain of it, memories. And keeping it similar to that opening, yeah. you know? I guess that's true. I don't know. I like Sanctuary. Don't get me wrong. Right, right. Um, it, it, and, and yeah, that's, I guess that's all I got to say about it. I guess we'll, we'll see in a couple of years where Face My Fears is on the chart. I think the problem is they said, well, we have Don't Think Twice, but we can't. We don't want to make that a techno song for the opening. So why don't we just do a different song, right? Mm-hmm. And and so it, it makes it a different feeling. Because Face My Fears doesn't have any... Like when they did the, um, the orchestral version of the opening song, they didn't do Face My Fears. They did Don't Think Twice. Right? Yeah. There's not an orchestral version of... Of uh, face my <laughs> like that would be pretty insane. I'd actually like to hear that, but I don't. I don't think that would sound very good. I think it'll happen eventually. You think so? Yeah. You think they'll play it at the orchestra? Maybe. Hmm. Interesting. Last question about music. Last topic we're gonna talk about with music. And I, we already kind of talked about this a little bit, but will Kingdom Hearts ever stop using Hikari for big moments? No, I don't want them to. And my next question was, should they? <laughs> Never. Uh, it's just, you knew it was coming, right? Right. And at the ending, it comes in and you're like, oh, so good. So good. So good. And I, I love the orchestral version of that. And I love that it, the way they set it up, I'd like to like be a fly on the wall in certain situations when they make Kingdom Hearts, like mm-hmm. when Nomura's sitting there with Yoko, and they decide because you like it fit perfectly. Like Hikari during the first part of the ending, mm-hmm. and then face my or not face my fears. <laughs> don't think twice. Yeah, and the crescendo of don't think twice happening during the big like. Yeah, thing that the happens, thing that happens, yeah. right? So, but they completed the whole song of Akari. So it's like, did they plan for these movies to be exactly this long to go with the song, or did they, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I I want to know how they decide that kind of shit because it blows my mind how good it is sometimes. Yeah. Well, and then like you think about, you remember when they shown us Face My Fears and we were, I was like, dude, this isn't the movie, this isn't the opening movie. It's part of the opening movie. And, but I still thought for sure that the chess pieces, when you're following them down, was the... But in the opening movie, it had, it's no, it's way past that. Yeah. Like, the opening movie... Because the because Roxas and Axel clashing their blades. Yeah. And going into the... Whopper, whopper, it's like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. But it re- that literally wasn't even how it goes in the opening no, movie. No, they so just like, were able to use that. They're so good at yeah. what they do. And then it just... It makes me angry that I don't have that kind of talent because it's so good. All right. So good. It's so, so good. Uh, but I, I, I don't know that there's much more discussion that needs to happen about Hikari there. You're right. They could should continue to keep using it. Please. And it's 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 like a band that has just like honestly, like, okay, I, I like Don't Face My Fears, but if like a really big moment's happening, uh, right you here, just combine two songs. Oh, uh, don't face my fears. <laughs> That's what we're gonna call them for now, because we're they're, they're one and the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're if, both if either Hearts of suit. those songs come in during a, like a big moment, it's not gonna feel the same way as if it was Hakari. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I'm a well, sanctuary. You know, we need some sanctuary in our life. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, or what's the what's the Japanese name of sanctuary? Passion. Passion. Thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the backwards. I need some I need some backwards lyrics in my songs, please. <laughs> yeah, we need to bring that shit back. Yes. What's weird about that is it's like that she says they're in English, even yeah. in passion. Yeah, yeah. And then she makes it backwards. <laughs> yeah. 
But I guess in in Face My Fears, the chorus is in English, in the Japanese version. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, this is. It's actually weird about this too. Is that those names have the same? Those songs have the same names in Japanese and English oh. this time around. Really? I thought one of them had a different name. No, it's called, still called "Don't Think Twice." I'm pretty sure. Mm, maybe. Ooh. I don't think so. Now, I, now we're gonna I'm, fact check. Mm, half-ass internet research. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> let's go to Spotify. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, you're right. Name. It's called Chikai. It's called Chikai. Chikai. But. Face My Fears is called Face My Fears English version or Face My Fears Japanese version. Mm. But Don't Think Twice is called Chikai. Hmm. What were you asking me? I'm sorry. How, how, do you like the remixed version that they've made of... Um, it's not Dearly Beloved, is it? No, no, no. I can't think of what song they were like more recently remixed. Who's they? Y- Utada and... She did it with some other like kind of like techno y Oh. The Would it be on Spotify? Uh yes, yes, yes. It's on her Spotify. I can't think of what which one it is. I it might be like it might be Hikari and and Passion combined. I think I can't remember. To answer the question, I just listened to it if I cut this part. I don't know how I'm editing this, but um <laughs> to answer your question, I'm not a huge techno boy. What? <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. What do you mean? Yeah. One of my favorite tracks of all time on KH3 is at night when it's super techno y. No, I really like that song though. Like I I, I despite the fact that it's techno. <laughs> like, okay, it's a different kind of techno. It's like <laughs> melodic techno, where like that is like Repeat the same thing over and over. Repeat the same thing okay, over okay, and over. Okay. Repeat the same thing over and over. And it gets bigger and bigger, 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 Let the beat drop. I'm not a fan of that kind of techno. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I hope I hope that sounds good. I don't think that probably sounded good at all. It wasn't bad until maybe when the beat dropped. I was looking at the the waves. Oh yeah, it looks pretty wild on the. The video, beat definitely the dropped. <laughs> the beat definitely has dropped. The beat dropped, ladies and gentlemen. So Jason, we've talked about music for a while now. Is there any music in Kingdom Hearts that you did not like? Kingdom Hearts three. I mean, besides the pirates, no. But you didn't even like hate that. You just wished it was. It gets annoying. The f- the f- the f- foo foo. S- I don't like it. Hmm. Like okay. it's not that I it, that it's just not as good or that I wanted something else. I just don't like it. Fair enough. Like going around anytime I'm like, like oh shit battle happens. <gasps> I'm like yeah. oh my god like yeah. chill. I'm in a one shot then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh. Like, we're here to take all of your booty. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> chill out. Chill. Chill with the, the dragonborn shouting. Yeah. I I can't think of anything I really didn't like other than, like, the Toy Story one kind of getting on my nerves. You know what music is super good that we didn't talk about? Hmm. The Hercules music. Oh, yeah. Because it has, like, it's, it's completely different than what we've had before. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't a fan of the Underworld themes in Kingdom Hearts 2. I didn't mind them. You know, like that. Yeah. The, 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 I don't know. I just wasn't a fan. I, they fit. Yeah. But I just. Mm. I like them. Uh, they talk about even when you get into the Hercules world, they go, oh, what? No fanfare? Like the. Yeah, yeah. They, there's a certain song where they. Play back that that fan. I think it's in the um, I think it's in the uh, where Zeus is. I can't think of Olympus. Thank you, Mount Olympus. Stop Mount Olympus. <laughs> thank they, you, <laughs> thank you, myself. Uh, they the there's like a motif of that, and then when fighting enemies, there's like the dun, 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 like from the Coliseum originally. Yeah. They have a motif of that too when you're fighting, but it's not the same song, but she like includes it in there at the end of like a phrase or whatever, and it's so good. Yeah. And and the music in general is just really good in, in the Hercules world. I, I'm a big fan, huge, huge fan of the Hercules world. In Definitely. Definitely. Do you have any, any other music talk you want to add there, Big Dog? 
while I do like the the um the last world's musics, I guess I haven't really listened to like the very last world's music. Yeah, you know that you showed me it doesn't play for super long. Yeah, that's maybe I'd have to listen more of that. Everybody knows what Skalad Kayim is. It was in a trailer. Oh yeah, okay. Skalad okay. Kayim has this music that it slaps, dude. But the problem is, you walk into Skalad Kayim and you're immediately thrown into a cutscene and a boss fight, and then you don't hear it ever again. Right. Unless you go back to Skalad Kayim for some reason after you beat the game, which it's like, why would you do that? Because there's nothing there. Uh, but it's so good. Yeah, that music is so good. But the the my point was it, when you would go to like Hollow Bastion or the world that never was, it has a very like more like ominous, but like also kind of like looping type thing, mm. to where it, I feel like at least subliminally for me, like it made it more ominous because it was so repetitive. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was still like slap, like I. F- we obviously love the Hollow Bastion music, um, right? And I don't know that that was like I don't know. I, I guess I'm only on like my second playthrough, whereas the other ones I've played multiple. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. I guess I'll see. Well, and you at spend this point, a lot of time in Hollow Bastion, just like. And the world that never was. A, well, wandering around with a wooden sword, not knowing what to do. <laughs> yeah. <So> that, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably thing. part of it. Well, but when you think about it, though, like the end of the world from Kingdom Hearts 1, which is the actual final thing you go to, you don't know what that music sounds like off the top of your head, do you? No, I can't think of it. Right. Yeah. Where Hollow Bastion wasn't really the last world, so to speak. Yeah. I, I put that more akin to the Keyblade Graveyard. Yeah. No, I could see that. You know? Yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for this podcast. Uh, We'd like to thank you guys so much for tuning in and hanging out with us. As always, if uh, you want to ask us a question or talk to us or do whatever, you can hit us up at answerreportpodcast at gmail.com. You can hit us up at Twitter at SpikeGettyBros. You can leave us a review on iTunes or any other podcasting apps that do reviews. iTunes is the only one I'm aware of. Uh, But you can leave us that five-star review and, and... a whole typed out review if you want and yeah we would appreciate it we'd appreciate it and we appreciate you guys listening next week we are finally going to give our individual reviews of kingdom hearts yes we have lots to think about we you know and talk about there's been a lot of negative talk about kingdom hearts 3 there's been a lot of positive talk where i think we're all more on the positive yeah but we're not delusional we're not delusional either. We know that this is a <laughs> game with some problems. So, barring Nomura dropping an announcement about uh, DLC, multiplayer DLC, <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about, we're going to review Kingdom Hearts 3 next week. So, don't, I mean, it's not like a formal review. We're not, it's not going to be structured. We're kind of just going to talk about certain aspects of the game what we thought of them, what we didn't like, what we did like. Right, just like talking about the strong points of the game that we feel like give them a certain rating. Right. And then what would subtract from that, I guess? Yeah. Or like, hey, I would have given it this, but because of this. Right. Right. That type of Also, review. I've been paid by Square Enix to give it a 10. <laughs> so that's what I'll be doing. Spoiler alert. <laughs> they paid me in money. They M-U-N-N-Y. Could never, they, they'll never pay me off. They paid me They paid me in Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia oh, gems. That, now that I might be interested and, in. And five-star weapons for Kate Sith. They said that. That Sora would be in the game if I gave it a ten. Yeah, and they're holding me ransom with that. So tune no in one... for that next week. <laughs> no one would blame you if giving it a ten on your podcast. I'm doing it for the people. Put Sora in the game. I'm doing it for the people. <laughs> All right, we will see you guys next week. And since he's not here, Jason, can you do me the honors? Oh my God! May your heart be your guiding key. Thank you. Goodbye. I was so worried I was gonna mess that up. You did, but it's okay. <laughs>
you know, I want you for a lifetime. Yeah. But if you got to think <laughs> twice. That's what she sounds like. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And then, it, and then it like goes to like He's normal. Like, you're too late. Yeah. Ah, you're too late, everybody. You didn't watch gamers join enough. You're too late. <laughs> you're too late. Shout out to gamers join. Shout out. <laughs>